fish are aquatic animals. Water contains oxygen dissolved in it. Depending on temperature and other factors, the level of dissolved oxygen in water is about 4 to 15 milligrams per liter. Fish extract this dissolved oxygen from the surrounding water by a process called aquatic respiration. Fish have specialized structures called gills to carry out exchange of gases with water. The gills are located on either side of the head of fish behind the mouth cavity. In bony fish, the gills are covered by a hard bony flap called the operculum. It is also known as gill cover. In cartilaginous fish, the operculum is lacking and the individual openings to gills are called gill slits. During the process of exchange of gases, a fish first gulps water through its mouth. At the time of the intake of water, the mouth opens while the operculum remains closed. The fish then closes its mouth and opens the operculum to force the water out through the gills. The color of the gills is dark red or brown red because of the presence of a large number of blood capillaries in it. These capillaries come in close contact with the current of water crossing the gills. Blood absorbs the dissolved oxygen from the water by diffusion. The unique structure of the gills ensures that they absorb most of the oxygen dissolved in the water that is passing between them. Simultaneously, carbon dioxide from the blood diffuses out of the gill capillaries into the water. The water containing carbon dioxide is expelled through the open operculum. Besides being the respiratory organs, the gills also play an important role in maintaining the balance of salts in fish. Fishes like bluegill, seahorse, lionfish, Atlantic cod possess the hard cover of operculum. The best example of a fish having no operculum is shark. All the species of shark lack operculum and have only gill slits. Respiratory System in Insects In insects like cockroach, housefly, etc., respiration takes place through tracheal system. The tracheal system is a network of tubes that frame the entire body of the insect. The trachea is open to the exterior through microscopic pores called spiracles, which are arranged on either side of the body segments. Each spiracle leads into a cavity, the tracheal chamber, from which the branches arise. Air enters the body through these spiracles. Tracheoles, the minute branches of trachea, reach each and every cell of the body and each cell gets oxygen directly. Alternate contraction and expansion movements of the abdomen expel and take air into the tracheal system. When the abdomen expands, inspiration of air takes place, and during contraction of the abdomen, air is expelled through the spiracles. Respiratory Organs in Amphibians Have you observed a frog or a toad sitting quietly? You would have noticed that though its mouth is closed, the flow of its mouth keeps going up and down. This is because it is breathing through its mouth. Unlike humans, 
Amphibians can breathe through lungs, through their skin, and also by using gills. Unlike birds and mammals, amphibians are cold-blooded, so they don't use up any energy for keeping their bodies at a constant temperature. This means their cells aren't working as hard as warm-blooded animals like us, and they don't need as much oxygen. In this module, let's learn about pulmonary respiration and cutaneous respiration in amphibians. Respiration through lungs is known as pulmonary respiration. The frog breathes through lungs while on land. Or when it is floating on the surface of the water. It takes in air through the nostrils into the mouth by lowering the floor of the mouth or the buccal cavity, keeping the mouth closed. Next, the nostrils are closed and the passage between the mouth cavity and lungs is opened. The floor of the buccal cavity is raised and air is forced into the lungs. Exchange of gases takes place in the lungs as well as the lining of the buccal cavity. Oxygen diffuses in and carbon dioxide diffuses out. Amphibian lungs are a bit different from our lungs. Our lungs are spongy and full of tiny little sacs called alveoli. These alveoli increase the amount of surface that oxygen can enter our bodies through. Since amphibians don't need as much oxygen as humans, they don't have as many alveoli either. The way amphibians use their lungs is different from humans too. Humans have a diaphragm beneath their lungs that causes the air to rush in and out. Amphibians don't have diaphragms and they have to force air into their lungs by moving their mouth like we do when we are swallowing. Respiration through the skin is known as cutaneous respiration. The skin on amphibians is very thin and is richly supplied with blood capillaries. The water carries oxygen with it, which diffuses into the capillaries and the carbon dioxide from the blood diffuses out. That's why most amphibians have to live in moist places where there's water nearby.